Welcome back everybody to Pop Culture Conspiracy. I'm your host T. How are y'all doing today? And in this video, I'm going to talk about how the industry replaced Cody Shane with Coy LeRae. So before I get into it, please like, share, and subscribe, and let's talk in the comments. Okay, so this is going to be like another case of replacements. Um, y'all know I love talking about who replaced who because it shows how the industry selects people. Two people can be doing very similar things, and for some reason or another, the industry she picks one over the other um, I think there are multiple things that are a part of this you know some people are not going to sell their souls some are some people may be bloodline you know yada 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 I'm gonna get into that later okay I'm gonna talk more about that later but you know how that works and I've, again I have several videos on my channel already talking about uh people who have replaced other people so if you want to go check some of those out please do but without further ado today i'm talking about cody shane and koi Ray. um you may or may not be aware of cody shane if you're not a little yachty fan or like maybe a trippy red friend i'm not a fan of either of those two people um i discovered her because i loved the beat to travis scott's song can't say off of his Astro album. Um, that's also how I met Don Tolliver and Wonder Girl because I liked the beat and I liked Don Tolliver's voice and I liked his verse. So I did my research on him, discovered him, and then I did my research on Wonder Girl who did the beat. And that's how I like found her Insta and like everything like that. And when I found her Insta, I saw that she did a beat for Cody Shane's song in Like That off of her Young Heartthrob EP that was released in 2018. I listened to the song, I loved it, played it a million times, listened to a few other things by her, but that ended up being like something that really stuck for me. However, a lot of other people who know her are probably Lil Yachty fans. He's the one who broke her onto the mainstream scene, but Lil Yachty hasn't really been doing much these days himself. Um, but the industry, for whatever reason, chose Koi over Cody. I have some theories of maybe why. I'm gonna, again, I'm going to get into that but let's just follow me here okay so now i'm gonna get into koi i discovered koi from big purr and no more parties i think that's like the stuff that really like kind of catapulted her into mainstream success anyway some other people will maybe say different i don't know how did y'all find koi but that's how i found koi like i don't really be looking for like main uh, under underground rap these days because a lot of it's not good um i've been watching koi's rise for a while though she is the epitome of nepotism Bazino is her dad Bazino from love and hip-hop but she's chosen not in that she's special but that she's been chosen to push satan's agenda it's giving handed over now here is where i get into the thick of things okay so koi and cody have a lot in common they are both industry babies they both grew up in the industry i have some information in here um from cody's wikipedia Kind of just showing how like several people in her family have been involved in the music industry or musicians themselves i think she's related to somebody in the group black or something like that but you know her father her mother like everybody like there her brother like she's got a lot of family involved in the industry and of course again koi's father is benzino so one could say that they're both bloodline or again like industry nepotism children at the very least they both had their mainstream debut around the same time, like 2017, 2018. Cody signed a deal first, though. She was signed with Epic Records back in 2015. Koi signed with Republic around, like, 2019 by the release of her second mixtape, EC2. Uh, Koi's just two years older. Koi's a little bit lighter skinned than her. In the music industry, it does matter. Ne but neither are dark skinned. They both have, like, this boyish image or like energy to them but the industry has worked to kind of tone that down for koi and they both kind of sound a little bit similar and some said that's because koi bites cody and i believe that because koi's old music sounds a lot different than her new music since she has made it to mainstream starting to miss success so i noticed that after koi signed with republic they invested time into her artistic development the Lipman brothers who run republic 
helped initiate Koi with an industry relationship with proud Satanist Trippy Red. She was still unknown for a while, but they used that time to change her music sonically, getting her production up, better writers, and just changing her sound and music content in general. They changed her style, they got her a wardrobe stylist, a skincare routine, a makeup artist, a hair stylist, a personal trainer. They changed her body big time, but they needed to because they had every intention to exploit it, which they have. And they got her some braces, and I think that they also probably got her, like, some jaw work done. Um, and I believe a nose job, okay? They invested a lot into Koi's beauty and getting her um, cosmetic enhancements, plastic surgery, maybe a few non-invasive treatments. You never know. I definitely they got her, like, some skin peels, some facials. Like, they really just got her right. They changed her look. Um... To just like make her attractive and really again bring out her beauty because Koi did need braces. And um, Koi was a high school dropout too, but the Lipman brothers helped get her an honorary diploma. Again, the ultimate Nepo baby. Uh, those Jewish men did what the black man couldn't do, okay? Koi said Bezina was broke and couldn't help take care of her, her siblings and her mom. Not sure how true that is, but the Littman brothers were at Koi's high school graduation. Her parents were nowhere in sight. So yeah, Bazino, you and the mama dropped the motherfucking ball. And Bazino, you was too busy chasing behind Althea and getting mug shots and running around off that cocaina allegedly and just looking crazy, a whole ass mess. Um. But then around like 2020, 2021, we start to see like Koi LeRae get like some really like A1 music placements. This is when like the industry really starts to like break her. Okay, like one after the other, she's getting like hits that are helping to build her hype. And these are like, again, placements as in features with like bigger artists. A lot of the collabs that she had during that time was with like popular male artists who could like really help blow her up. Because again, like their marketing coy is like a female rapper. And even now, like she just she has a new song coming out with Busta Rhymes, who's again, a very successful, legendary, like male hip-hop artist so koi continues to get cream of the crop placements um but let's go down the list okay so oh but before i go before i go koi also released two eps during this time okay because let me think let's let's go down the timeline i want to be clear 2019 koi laray signs with republic she gets into an industry relationship they do the artistic development and the investment into her look aesthetically changing her up shaping her up yada 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 okay she releases some music around 2020 and then 2021 like if she, she really starts to like take off and she releases two eps during that time as well like some of the features some of these heavyweight features i'm gonna name are on those eps not all of them but just some um she released ep better things and she released now or never okay so let's go down the list fetty wap better days came out in 2020 ddg impatient 2021 fredo bang ooh ooh 2021 gonna slide 2021 lil dirk number no parties that was a feature number no uh 2021 pooh shiesty big purr 2022 kodak black lonely at, it's lonely at the top 2021 wreck banga gimme licky 2021 2022 blick blick with nikki uh essie brown oh no no essie brown eyes 2021 but now see what i'm saying like hits back to back to back to back notice when i was talking about normani normani i was saying one of the big complaints people have about her is she don't be releasing frequently enough when i'm going down this list when a label wants to push you and giving you promotion and money and stuff like that you releasing back to back to back to back to back to back to back that's part of the marketing so people don't forget about you after your one hit I Spice has been has back to back to back hit uh, releases and top collabs like good placements that's shit that will take you to the top and with Koi um, with some of these videos that she was in let me go down the agenda because I'm noticing like her style her aesthetic her lyrics everything changed after going 
to a major label, okay? So, something that I noticed, the impatient video with DDG, she's definitely pushing the child sexualization agenda here. She's showing that body off, okay? Notice that. The Fred O'Bang song, ooh, ooh, super sexual um, lyrics, and she started to, like, release kind of, like, sexual videos on Instagram. I noticed around, like, the 2021 time is when, like, we really started to see a lot of Koi's body. It's when we really started to see um, her, like, on Instagram, kind of, like, doing what we see with, like, Chloe Bailey and, like, Megan Thee Stallion, like, really showing off on IG. Um, she was, yes, gonna slide video. Uh, super sexed up, showing her body off, dancing very sexually. And then the little Dirk No More Parties. Uh, right before that drop, they orchestrated a PR stunt between her and Benzino. Um, I noticed, like, right after, you know, I'm like, well, you were fighting with your dad like this? And then, like, right after that, she dropped No More Parties, and then it blows up. So that was definitely, like, PR stunt, press move to help try to, like, take things up another level um for her and like just get attention on her um i also noticed that in the music video for no more parties we see koi doing like um a humiliation ritual uh no excuse me a bathtub ritual uh she's super sexed up she's got like this chanel top on and she her hair changes notice that too like they grow her hair out, they give her, like, a more flattering hairstyle, make her more feminine, give her some braces, like, they really had Koi, like, with a good stylist, everything. She completely kind of changed her look, started wearing makeup, all that. Uh, let's see. Pooh Shiesty. She was pushing, uh, definitely a lot of guns up in that video, like, pushing violent lyrics, pushing a lot of sex too just like with the brown eyes just like with the Nicki Minaj blick 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 like super sexual dancing super sexual lyrics but also with a violent edge like the sex and violence that is what the industry wants that's what the industry pushes and I just noticed that had changed or just really become highlighted in her music after signing Super Public and then with the Nicki collab when Erica Banks says that Nicki collabs with people who can't rap i think erica's not taking into account that nikki doesn't have much power or much control none of the artists do like i definitely feel like nikki didn't really want to do that collab but i always felt like you know republic records said you will and so nikki had to um but nikki's a part of the game too she's She's a um an instrument in the in the music industry too. So don't think that she has just all this almighty power over her career and everything that she does. Again, I think I mentioned Rec Banga give me Licky 2021. So just a lot of freaky sexual like over the top lyrics that we start to see but we start to see like non-stop back-to-back releases with major people again fetty wop ddg and these are industry people who've already sold their soul you know it reminds me of again american horror story when they all take the black pill now you're in the in crowd now you're hanging with the big boys now like peep that notice that uh, Koi is also getting major radio play and TikTok promo around this time, which is again helping to make her more popular. So she's officially in the game. Like, initiation complete, oath taken, Koi's in the game. Meanwhile, oh, before I want to go there, before I go there, I want to say this something that I noticed. A lot of the artists that she collabed with during that time, right now, they're like, where's Waldo? You know what I mean? Like, where the fuck is Fetty Wap? Where the fuck is Fredo Bang? Where the fuck is Rec Banga? You know, Pooh Shiesty's in jail. I see, like, where is she? A lot of these people know where to be found. But you know what I think? I think the industry pulls people off the shelf and out of hiding when they want to promote the, the person that they've chosen. I think they will pull a rabbit out of a hat and say, hmm, like, let's get some people on our label who we just have sitting around who haven't worked in a while and but they have a name. And hey, call him up, Fetty. Like, you gotta do this collab. You know, Nikki, you gotta do this collab. 
So I'm just I be noticing the bullshit because now it's like Koi got she got her collabs just to help her blow up. You know, you need to have cosigns to help you blow up. Collabs are very important, and that's when I'm gonna hop into the. Meanwhile, when Koi was blowing up around 2021, 2020, between 2020 and 2022, like that critical time for Koi. Uh, what's her name? Cody Shane really was like benched. Okay, uh, let's see. She <laughs> she was benched, falling further and further into obscurity. She releases an EP in 2020 that didn't really make any major noise and didn't release anything until 2022. So for two years, they sat Cody Shane down and then brought Koi Ray up. And so that they wouldn't be competition. Because if Cody Shane was allowed to release at the same time as Koi, because Cody's music, as the general consensus has decided, is a lot better. And I agree that it's a lot better to listening to just a few of Cody's songs and just a few of Koi's songs. Cody's music is well more progressed and developed than Koi. But... Uh, the industry has chosen Koi over her, so they needed to sit Cody down and bring Koi up. There, that is not a coincidence that for two years Cody Shane didn't come out with any releases, but Koi was like fucking releasing back to back to back to back to back to back during that time. And people claim and people believe that Cody or no, that Koi stole a lot of Cody swag. And they're both signed to major labels. So they're both, they both have a blood contract. And that's how those contracts go. It could work out. It could not. You just might end up shelved. A lot of people end up shelved. Very few people end up big and promoted. So just something I've, again, I've noticed. Uh, By the time Cody released music again in 2022, she still didn't have a bigger co-sign than Lil Yachty. And the damage from Koi's uh rain in 2021 for the most part was already done so it's hard it's hard to bounce back and then you don't have anybody backing you again with major placements to kind of help get you that promo and to propel you up and give you that notoriety uh let's see again other things that were done to push koi pr relationship with trippy red and pr relationship with pressure they went to the bet awards together to help gain more publicity they started posting freaky pics on ig like people love a relationship they did it with money bag yo and megan Thee stallion so with megan Thee stallion oh excuse me with with koi laray they put her with another dude kind of sexed up her image gave her a different vibe and she started posting on ig dancing twerking cooking videos anything to promote her they gave her some magazine covers they gave her a nikki feature they created some nikki drama and drama around the release to drum up pr and promo like peep game this is a game so things that were done to like really push koi along and keep her pushing so let's talk why koi why her over cody even though again the general consensus is that cody is way better and in my opinion she is because i'm listening to songs like thinking about you and like that sleep at night they are better than the vast majority of koi's discography of course making music with better lyrics and relatability better production too but maybe cody didn't want to sell her soul also koi was looking very masculine at the beginning of her career kind of like cody shane but cody shane has been like out and open i think the industry got a hold of koi before she really like cemented if she liked boys or girls because when they did get her when she was early early on they put her with trippy red immediately so I think it was good to it was good for Koi. Koi had that edge because it was easier to market Koi as straight because she wasn't popular enough to have like for if she did make an announcement about her sexuality she wasn't popular enough for it to have mattered like they got her in again the early phases and put her with men and marketed her a particular way because they they've been pushing her to do the child sexualization pizza agenda they've been pushing her to do the sexual fluidity agenda they've been using her to do over sexualization but a sex kitten programming agenda like koi has been doing it all okay all at the same damn time but 
I think they felt like it was more marketable to have her straight. And because Cody was already out and loud and proud, it was like, uh, you're not believable. We can't really market you as straight at this point. And, like, it's just not going to work. Like, maybe they felt like Koi was, it was easier to, like, make Koi over aesthetically than they felt like for Cody. You never know, Jim. But... These are just some ideas as to why they picked Koi LeRae over Cody Shane. Uh, let's see. Let me take it back to the, sex, to the sexualization and sexual orientation thing. Remember how Nikki asked Koi about her sexual identity when them two were talking on IG Live. So it was a mystery to Nikki Minaj. That's how you know Nikki really didn't know her. It's like and it was just like the labels like telling kind of Nikki like you gotta you gotta do this. Um, Cody has been like seen out with women, and I just still feel like that is just something that the masses still don't eat up, and that's why they do have a lot of people in the industry who still hide their sexual orientation because as much as people do have pride nowadays, like the general public still doesn't accept a lot of this stuff like that's just the truth but that's why there's another agenda to try to make them a certain way so that you know they accept it because they are that way themselves uh but let's not go there today let me see and then maybe maybe koi was a better mk ultra candidate bloodline and ancestral demons are real again these are two people who are connected to the industry via family MK Ultra satanic ritual abuse is real. It is done in families to create celebrities and superstars and people for the Matrix who the Matrix is going to use. Agent Smiths, that's what they all are. If they made, if, the, if you're whether you're Jason Bourne or you know some of these people who do the mass shootings for the government, a lot of these people are MK Ultra slaves. So maybe Koi was a better candidate for that kind of programming to make her into a celebrity slash beta sex kitten. You never know. It may sound far fetched, but do your research. So I think another person that was de de uh, dethroned by Koi was Cash Page out of the Cactus Jack camp. She can sing her butt off, but I just think that she uh, should have been on Don Tolliver's tour instead of some of the whack ass fools that he had with him. But the industry has its people picked and maybe they just felt like Koi was just a better fit, a better look. So I don't know. Let's talk in the comments. But this is all I got. I just noticed it. Other people notice it. Shout out to Cody Shane. Very talented woman. And as far as Koi, like, okay, girl. You know, industry baby tees. Talk to you on the next one. Bye.